All right, so this is a talk about how you can do parallel Python computing using Dask, D-A-S-K, and how you can do that easily on your machine without having to do any installs by using Docker. You can just run a Docker Compose and bring up a distributed Dask environment and play with or actually do real work with parallel Python code. Um, it's a way of you being able to spread the load across multiple cores in a way on your box that would work the same way it's going to in the cloud or in your data center. So it's kind of cool that way. So we're going to start with what is it going to look like? Okay, so that's the wrong panel. So we'll look at this panel instead. So this is the GitHub repo that's got a uh, Docker Compose YAML file in it. You actually, I copied it from somewhere else and hacked it up a little bit to make it work the way I wanted for this. So here's what the environment's gonna look like. We're gonna bring up on the development box, which is this machine here, I'm gonna bring up a Docker VM, run Docker for desktop, and we're gonna start four containers. There's a DAS scheduler, which is really the home base for this. Uh, when you create parallel Python tasks, so you create tasks uh, every, bit of parallel work you do in uh, Dask is going to be turned into a task and that task is going to get shoved onto a scheduler and the scheduler is going to hand that out to different worker nodes. And the worker nodes are drawn that way because they actually query the scheduler to find out what they can pick up. And uh, for the environment that I've got here, we're also going to bring up a Python Jupyter notebook server. So we're going to run um, queries inside a Jupyter notebook and to make it easier for me, although it's totally not required, I mounted my GitHub repo as a volume mount inside of the Python server. There's also named mounts available with the uh, compose file. So those would be persistent uh, across uh, building new containers and that kind of stuff. So you have, you have a choice, three choices really. You can just run Git on the Jupyter server and pull down what you need. You can mount a development directory or you can use name mounts to retain persistence. Uh, I'm gonna, the notebook server is gonna be on port 8888 and I'm gonna show you the scheduler dashboard um, on 8787, which will show you the uh, cluster health. So what we're gonna do, I'm in uh, the Dask directory, so we're gonna do docker compose up. All we need to do, if we look over here, we will see nodes come online. So I set this, up with 14 cores. Um, that's basically an eight core CPU, two hyper threads each, leaving two threads for the host. Um, I actually did that because it's a dual socket and I've seen some weird behavior, so I'm kind of playing with it. Okay, so we can come over here now and we could see, we can see what? We can hit the reload button and see what's happening. So here we can see the number uh, so here are two worker nodes, right? So worker nodes are automatically sized to have the number of threads equal the number of cores available to them. So really having two worker nodes didn't make sense here, but I kind of wanted to get a feel for what it would look like with two worker nodes instead of one. So in theory, I have one thread for every core available to, to, to Dask. Um, in this case, we'll actually have two, um, <clears throat> but that probably works out okay. Also, we'll get blocked, but it won't be that big a deal. All right. And we can look at the system health of this, which we don't care about right now. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, and we have a graph. This will show us the execution graph of the task. We don't have that yet. So basically we can come back to here and see, oh, that's why it looks so weird. Uh, we'll make that thing go back to a normal size so we can see what it looks like. All right, <clears throat> so when, when this comes up, as I said, there's a Python Jupyter server. We wanna connect to it on port 88. 88, uh, that, Pyth that notebook server expects to have usernames and passwords, which out of the box, oh no, I hit the wrong button. So we'll start it again while I can talk. So what the easiest way to make that work so you don't have to set a username and password every time you restart the container is you can just use a security token that'll show up in the log file at the bottom. So you can see here the worker nodes are coming up, the scheduler's coming up, the notebook server is the last one. So if you run this from a command line instead of somewhere else, and you're on a PC, don't hit control C to copy because that would be dumb. Okay, so I'm gonna connect to it right here and this will bring up our Jupyter Notebook. 
And if we go and look at my GitHub repo, this is actually, I just created a playground directly. So I had something mounted. We're gonna pull this thing up. Yay. Okay, so uh, one thing I have to remember here is to comment this out, uncomment this. All right, so what do we wanna do? We would like to um, talk about how this is gonna work, right? So I stole this from the distributed Dask uh, quick start guide. So there's like nothing special here. We're gonna bring up a Dask cluster where you are gonna set up a client connection to the Dask cluster that's already running on this in Docker. You can do kind of like in process use of Dask, but I actually wanted to see what this would look like with multiple nodes. Um, if we run that piece there, you can see we have two workers with 28 cores. So we have two workers with 14 cores each. So we may get blocked occasionally. The next part is just two functions, square function and negative function. And just to show you that that works, I'm gonna run this here. We can see, hey, we're gonna, step one is gonna be the square of a number. Step two would actually be the negation of that. And then we're gonna print out the results. So 10 squared is 100, negative is minus 100, printing the result is minus 100. Yeah, yeah that worked. And that took 44 millisecond, microseconds to run. All right, so what do we wanna do? We wanna take this squaring and negation and push it across the network. So what we're gonna do is for however many numbers in our vector we have, for whatever our length of our vector, um, we're gonna break each one of those into a task and pass it off to a work, through the scheduler to worker nodes. So if I come here, and I can say, hey, I want to create a map that basically we're going to create a range of 40,000 entries and it's zero to 40,000 and we're going to square them. That'll be A. And so that'll be the first phase that'll have to run. The second phase will be negating all of those. And then, and so those are the instructions we're going to do. Those are going to create the tasks, two task types, and there'll be 40,000 of each. Um, and then the last step is to take that vector of 40,000 squared and negated numbers and sum them and return that as a result. Now, the important, the other thing here is you can actually submit this and it'll go as a future and it'll go run. Um, but what I want to wait for the results for my timer. So this get the summed result. I'm actually just going to call that after the submit and that um, waiting for a result that causes a blocking read. We're going to wait until all the tasks are done. So I'm gonna run this. And if we come over here, we can see that the notebook is giving work to the scheduler, right? And now the scheduler's got 100% of the load because everything's been given off to the scheduler. And now we can see the two worker nodes are each running. They've got multiple cores, so they're all running over 100%, which is weird, but that's the way stuff works. So if we were to come over to here and we look at the task, come on, there you go. So what you see here is 40,000 um, multiplies, because those are the 40,000 uh, squares. Then you see 40,000 summations happening across 14 nodes. You can see the work is pretty well spread. I had actually picked the wrong number of uh, tasks before and it ended up disproportionately allocated across my sockets. Okay, so we we're still running the 40,000. Now these have delays in them to make them long enough for us to look at. So you can see we have 40,000 um, summations that are happening and now it looks like the amount of work's gone down. Oh, and now we're ace, okay. And so we can see here, that these were 40,000, um, mul the multiplies in green, and I'll show you on another screen because I knew that from the legend from before. The yellows are the sums, then all the results are gathered back, and then the results are returned to us. If we look at the status screen, you can see how this would work, right? Um, that's really weird looking. Um, I don't know why it looks like that one different than the other one, but that's the way it looks. Um, and you can see how many bytes were moved, and let's see, workers, tasks, we can just go across these. There shouldn't be anything interesting in here anymore. So this one takes a little while to come up when you got a lot of tasks on it. Um, and the system is idle now and the profile doesn't do it. Oh, graph. So the other thing is, if you wanna know what 
where the tasks are and how they flow into each other and then how those flow to the result. In this case, we actually took 40,000 squares and we fed them immediately to 40,000 sums. So in that case, there'll be 40,000 tasks for multiply and 40,000 tasks for sums. We might have actually aggregated those, like if we were bucketing. So we might say, hey, we're going to do 40,000, but every thousand of those is going to be summed and then we're going to do negate that or we're going to do something else, right? So this is crazy. What this really is is 40,000 nodes that ran. Um, and, and, if, and I can't even highlight it because it's like too weird. So what I'd like to do is show you, just do 40 here real quick, just to show that last screen. So I'm going to set the range to 40. Then I'm going to run it. Wow. That really didn't take very long with 40 when you have that many nodes, does it? If we go to graph, we can see that there are 40 rows here. And you can see that we square it and then we sum it. Negate it. I'm sorry. And then we have a sum node over here. So this is the task layout. Those tasks get allocated across the worker nodes. If we look at the status screen here, we can see there wasn't really much happening. And then we did this add. And that's because we really have 40 and 40 is 80. So I hope you thought that was cool. Um, basically, what we did is we were able to connect to our Python server, run a little job. That job spun off a bunch of tasks. The tasks were given off to the scheduler. The scheduler ran those. And then you'll notice that there was an aggregate function at the end of this, which was um, the sum. We're going to submit and calculate the sum of all these. That all got fetched back. And that's this little box here. And then that's it. So it's super easy. There was really nothing complicated about this. We just created some regular functions here. I didn't even really dask them at all, right? Like we just created these functions and then we decided we're going to create a map against a vector. So this would be some kind of input range. Here I just did 0 through 40 or 39, but basically it could be any data set. And then, then we dispatched that off. And when we did that, um, Dask was able to allocate all those tasks out to the worker nodes and we ended up running this kind of task in this sort of configuration. We gathered the results back. And that's it. It is like super freaking easy with Docker. So I install nothing except for Docker. You run Docker Compose out of this Git repo or any repo where you find what you want to do and you are done. I hope you really enjoyed it. I found this stuff really interesting.